Praise the Lord, everyone. Hey, Amen. I like that song. Yeah. I mean, we do need each other. And I don't think we can survive um, as a solo act. We need to pray for each other. We need to encourage each other, strengthen each other, and help when we can. It's, it's good when you get help. It's also good when you give help. The Bible tells us it's more blessed to give than to receive. So it's a good thing when we help each other out. I mean, I thank the Lord for this day. Need your prayers. Pray for my wife. Man, she's a, when she's not well, she makes me not well. And I don't get a lot of sleep at night. Uh, uh, when, I, when I get sick, I just want to crawl off somewhere by myself. Leave me alone. Don't talk to me. Don't bother with me. Just let me lay somewhere real still and real quiet. And my wife is 180 degrees different than that. Amen. So when she can't get to sleep, I can't either. And I get one of these. I'm not feeling good. I'm not. Okay. Fifteen minutes later, I'm still not feeling good. I don't know if y'all should pray for her or pray for me. Just pray. If you open your Bibles to the book of Isaiah, chapter number 55. I'm going to slip a little extra in for the, for the scriptures. So we're going to start off with 1 through 4 and then jump down to 6 and 7. And then we'll go to the book of Acts, chapter number 13. It says, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money... Come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat that ye, or eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and commander to the people. And jump down to verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will give, or he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Just, just one more. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. One more. For as the heavens are higher, than the earth, so are my ways than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Now, the book of Acts, chapter 13. I'm sorry, as I was reading, I kept looking, I was like, man, this is good. So, yeah, it's kind of one of them times when you just say, just give me one fry. It's like, all right, just one more, one more. In verse 34, Acts 13 and verse 34. And concerning that he raised him up from the dead, now no more to return to corruption, he said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. And then let's just go back to Isaiah. That's where I would like to take my thought from verse number 2. It's not the text, but my thought is from verse number two. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread? Yeah. My subject this morning is why waste your money? I think we have here a scripture that is literally dealing with the children of Israel. They were struggling. 
They were having problems. And at some point, it seemed like God had forsaken them. He did cut them off. He sidetracked them. Not forever, but for a time. And I'm glad that he did. I can't say that I'm glad that they sinned, but I'm glad that God sidetracked them for a time because had he not sidetracked them, then the Gentiles would never have had an opportunity to have what we have. And so that is, I guess if you want to talk about an example of getting something good from something bad, that's an example of how God took the wrong of one people and helped another. But they were going about to establish their own righteousness. They wanted to be right with God, but they wanted to be right with God their own way. This is not something that is unique to the children of Israel. We have that problem even today, where people want to serve God, but they want to serve God the way they want to serve God. And serving God your way never works. And that is what happened with Cain and Abel. Cain wanted to serve God, but he wanted to serve God the way he wanted to and not the way God asked him to. And we have become tricked. We have become fooled by a lot of preachers today who would have you believe all you have to do is just want to be right with God and somehow that magically makes you right with God it doesn't work that way God did not establish his word and then say well because bishop whoever said I'm going to go along with what he said because it sounds better it doesn't work that way because God knows what's best for his people He knows what you can and cannot do. He knows that because he came here himself in the form and flesh of a human being. He came here and experienced life like we experience it. Matter of fact, if you read carefully, you will see that he experienced more than we ever will. Because God is not going to ever ask from you something that he doesn't know that you can go through. And one of the most beautiful things about this is the fact that he didn't just know it because he's God. He knows it because he lived it. So you can never go before God and say, you don't know how I felt. You don't know what it was like. You don't know what it is to have somebody that you love turn on you. You'll never be able to tell him that. And so to go before God and offer him something different than he asked for can never be acceptable to God. Never. Now, if you want to give him extra on top of what he asked for, that's fine. But you've got to at least give him what he asked for. He said, follow peace with all men. And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. You can't live a sinful life and stand before God and say, well, it was just tough. Life was hard. Too many temptations. Because he was tempted in all points, yet without sin. He never gave in to the temptation. And he never asked you to withstand the temptation without giving you help. He he would never do that. That's the reason why he gave us the Holy Ghost. So that when temptations come and things get too hard, you will always be able to lean on him to help you through those situations. I'm not talking about the ones who just do wrong and come back and say, I'll get right. I'm talking about the ones who feel like their right is right. There's a big difference. Everyone that thirsteth, come to the waters. Now, the waters that he's talking about here is not physical water. He's very clear about that. Not 
the waters that you drink, but the living waters. That's what he's talking about. And out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. God is talking about the spirit that he gives us. So everyone that is having problems, come and get this living water. Come and buy without money. Uh, now that may seem like it doesn't make sense. But we know that oftentimes God says things that doesn't seem like it makes sense. How can you buy something without money? And then, now this was long before credit cards. But how do you buy and you don't have anything? Because what God is offering costs so much you couldn't afford it anyway. The Bible asked the question, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? There is absolutely nothing that the world has that it can offer God that would be of value to him. The only thing that has value is your soul. That's the only thing that matters. Because when heaven and earth pass away, your soul will still be. Your soul will be around. Your soul is still going to either answer for what you have done or enter thou into the joy of the Lord, like the scripture says. And so he's not talking about buying something like water, but he's talking about coming and getting the Holy Ghost. Buy, eat, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. He's not talking again. He's not talking about something that costs a lot of money. He's talking about something that's invaluable, something that you can't put a price on. Buy wine. Now, don't go out and get drunk, y'all. I, 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 the reason why I made sure I added this verse in was so I could clarify that. The Bible is not talking about going out and drinking. If you read in the book of Proverbs, he talks about how wine maketh glad the hearts of men. It's wine that makes you happy. And so he's coming, he's telling us to come where you can buy happiness, where you can get joy, where you can get something that money cannot buy in your life. People try to buy happiness, but you can't buy joy. You can buy a good vacation. You can buy a little time away from trouble. But once you get back home, trouble is waiting for you. If, if we're just completely honest, sometimes even when we go on vacation, trouble's waiting when you get off the airplane. Trouble knows how to find you. And so he's saying here, if you just want some joy, come here and get some. You don't even have to pay for it. The milk that he's talking about. Peter clears this up. He says, Sin desire the sincere milk of the word. And so if you want joy, you've got to have the word of God. You cannot establish your own right with God. You cannot be right with God because I've got a list of rules that I follow. It doesn't work that way. You have to go by the list that he has. I, I used this as an example a long time ago, and it's, it's still true today. If I told my children, when I get home from work, you better have the dishes clean, washed, dried, and put up. And when I get home, I find out that they cut the grass, vacuumed, made all the beds, dusted, and the dishes are still sitting in the sink. That's not what I asked for. That's the first thing I would tell them. I didn't ask you to cut the grass. I didn't ask you to clean the house. When I left, I said, wash the dishes, dry them, and put them away. That's what I was looking for. So if you think that the fact that you cut the grass, cleaned the house, and dusted is getting you out of trouble, you're mistaken. I'm not just saying that. I got, I've got children. And, and they know that's the way I am. If I ask you to do something, all the extra don't matter if you didn't do what I asked you to do. 
It's the same way with God. You can give him all the extras you want. When he comes back, he's going to ask you, have you been washed in the blood? All right. He's going to ask you, did you do what I asked you to do? Well, I lived a good, clean life. Well, did you have your sins washed away? Well, I came to church faithful every time the door was, was open. Did you receive my spirit? Well, I gave all my extra money to the church to make sure that they always had enough for their programs. Did you live a holy life? That's what he's looking for. That's the reason why in Matthew, Jesus said, many will come to me in that day and say, Lord, Lord, and list off all the things that they did. And he said, now I will declare to them, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. You might have did things for me. You might have done things in my name, but you didn't do what I asked you to do. All right, I'm going to get back to the subject. He asked a question, wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread? Why are you going out and wasting your money on stuff that doesn't satisfy you? Why spend money on things that don't give you joy? We spend and we save, we save, we save so we can go on vacation. And when we get on vacation, we're not happy. We get to the amusement park and we're mad because they charge so much money to, for the rides. But we've saved up money for that. We get there and we're mad because it's raining. I spent all this money and got here and it's burning up hot outside. That can't buy you joy. He's, and he's, that's what he's getting. He's, why are you wasting your money on stuff that can't satisfy you? And just for the record, coming to church and giving all your money to the preacher so he can get a new jet or so he can get a new car so he can have a bigger house or have a gold-plated toilet stool. None of those things is what God has asked for. All right, I know preachers on TV that have said God threatened to kill them if you didn't give them a certain amount of money and God wants them to have another jet plane and all of that. That has got nothing to do with the Bible. That is going and buying that which does not satisfy. All you have done is satisfied the one getting the money. God said come and buy without price. Don't cut your ties off, saints. He asked for that too. But he didn't ask you to buy me a jet plane. Unless it's on your heart. Incline your ear, verse 3, and come unto me. Hear and your soul shall live. So he's making a connection between what he's saying in the first two verses with the fact that it comes from listening to the word of God. If any man call on the name of the Lord, he shall be saved. And how shall he call on him in whom he has not heard? How shall he hear without a preacher? You can't get it by sitting at home and reading it on your own. You can't get it because the Lord knows my heart. It's not like that. You're going to get it because you inclined your ear and heard the word of the Lord and applied it to your life. The reason why some people get the Holy Ghost and they're miserable is because they're not really serving God. They're not really got their heart in it. They got the Holy Ghost, but then they turn around and they, they got one eye on the world and one eye on God. And anytime your heart is divided, your life is miserable. You can't serve two masters. You can't serve God and serve the devil. It's not possible. You can only serve one. And the person that tries to do both is a miserable person. The only way you can get this thing right is by listening to the word of God. And you can't hear the word without a preacher. You can't sit at home and read it out loud and say, ah, I heard it. And you can't turn your television on and get it from the TV preacher. Let me say that again. 
You can't watch YouTube. You can't listen to the radio. You can't order tapes. You can't watch them on television or satellite. You can't do any of that because he said, forsake not the assembling of yourself together as the manner of some is. Some people feel like they can be home and be saved, but you can't. Incline your ear. How do I incline my ear? I got to come to church and hear what the Lord is saying to me. Then he goes on. I'm just going to jump down and get to the point. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. There is a time when God can be found and a time when God cannot be found. Now, I just want to say it like this because God has to draw us. In the book of Philippians, it says it's both his to will and to do his good pleasure. You don't have a desire without, giving it, without God giving it to you. There are some folks that are not in church right now and they don't even care that they're not in church right now. You know why? Because God hasn't given them the desire. But when you want to be right, God will give you the desire. God will draw you. God will lead you. He said, if you ask, it shall be given. If you knock, it shall be opened. If you seek, you shall find. That is not talking about treasure hunting. That's talking about the Holy Ghost. He's talking about a good father giving good gifts to his children. So when he said that, he was talking about us receiving the Holy Ghost. If you ask, you shall receive. Some folks don't get because they just run in their mouth. I want it, but they're not really asking for it. Some people don't get it because they're not really looking. They just come to church and say, Lord, I want you to give it to me. Now, you know I deserve it. There was a sister that came to this church that wanted to get saved and, and her name was Rose she got down at the altar and she was she said hallelujah hallelujah it's Rose Lord hallelujah hallelujah it's, Lord, it's Rose Lord like that was supposed to mean something to God not you sister Rose <laughs> she never this woman never got the Holy Ghost because she felt like she deserved it she come she was trying to do what seemed right but she wasn't seeking God. She deserved the Holy Ghost. It's Rose. I deserve this. You should give it to me because it's me. So when you come to God asking him for help because you deserve it, you're not getting it. When you come to God looking for the spirit of God because you deserve it, you're not going to get it. You get the Holy Ghost because he says he loves a broken and contrite spirit. That he will not despise. God loves somebody that realizes you nothing without me. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he's near. You can't look for God when he's through with you. All right. He said, let the wicked forsake his ways. Uh, there's a scripture in the Bible that talks about you either for God or you're against him. But you can't be both. You can't be neutral. If you're not serving God, then your ways are wicked. Let the wicked forsake his way. Let the man that's in sin stop sinning. You can't serve God in sin. Now he makes reference to the sure mercies of David. Now they're mercies to us because we have his spirit. But to those that don't have his spirit, it's a different thing altogether. Here's what his mercies was. The resurrection of the dead to never die again. That's what he talked about in the book of Acts. He was talking about Jesus at Cain. He said, now this is the sure mercies of David. This is what I was talking about when I said, when I made reference in Isaiah about the sure mercies of David. I was talking about a savior coming that would die and give you his spirit. Right. So he said, incline your ear and come to me here and your soul shall live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you and even the sure mercies of David what's the covenant that you can live forever I will give you everlasting life when you die you're not really dead you're just asleep and when I call with the voice of an archangel when I call you'll wake up and be changed 
and live forever, never having to worry about death again. But for those who won't do right, in the book of Revelations, he said, they will be cast into the lake which burns with fire. And that is the second death. For those who don't want to be saved, he said, now you can live forever. That's the mercies of David that I was talking about. For those that don't, you're going to die again. The second death, which is separation from God forever. And then he goes on and he just clears up the thing because he, he, makes it, he makes it very plain. to Let the wicked forsake his ways. Let the wicked stop doing what he thinks is right. Then he goes on, he said, because my thoughts are not your thoughts. You're not going to serve me based on what you think. I have people tell me that often. Well, I don't see it like that. doesn't matter how you see it. What matters is how God said it. I'm not getting, when I talk to people about the Bible, I'm not telling folks what I think the Bible means. I'm telling you what it says. Now, if you want to argue and fight with God about it, that's different. Go ahead and do that. Amen. But I can't change it to make you happy. I can't do that. I'm not guessing. I'm not talking about, well, the way I see it is, or if it were me, I would. When I do that, I'm very clear. This is just my opinion. If, if it were me, I would go ahead and invest my money in a 401k. That's my opinion. That's not Bible. But if you're asking me, is it all right for you to snub somebody because they made you mad? No, the Bible said love your enemies. Matter of fact, the Bible tells us to be like Jesus, doesn't it? Right. And when his enemies came up against him, he said, friend, betrayest thou the son of man with a kiss? He didn't tell him, you wicked, evil devil, get away from me. We, we'll do that kind of stuff. I'm sick of all your lying and conniving. Judas was a thief. The Bible says he was a thief, and that's why he carried the purse. You go to in the book of St. John, he says that. Judas held the purse because he was a thief. That never changed. He never stopped being a thief. That was the reason why he sold Jesus out, because he just wanted more money. He didn't do it because he wanted him dead. He did it because he wanted money. Amen. All right, I know some folks are going to be mad because I'm trying to defend Judas. I'm not. I'm not defending Judas. I'm telling you the man had a different idea. That's all. He didn't think he was getting ready to have Jesus put to death. That's why he took the money back. I didn't mean for all this to happen. I just wanted some free money. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. And your ways are not my ways. If you think that you can be saved based on how you see it, he already told you, my thoughts are as high above the heaven and my ways are are as high above the heaven in your ways and your thoughts. You can't, don't come to me trying to justify me by how you see it. Because your ways are not my ways. Don't come telling me this is the best I could do. I could do, Because your thoughts are not my thoughts. The way you see it isn't the way it is. So why keep wasting your money on stuff that can't help you? Why keep going back to the place where you got burnt in the first place? That's something I never have understood. I never understood why you come to church to get saved because the devil's treating you bad. Then you turn around and go right back to him. You think he treated you bad before you got saved? What do you think he's going to do to you when you come back to him? Come on back home. I used to tell my daughters this all the time when they were little girls. From the time before they could even talk, I would tell them, I love you. Now they wouldn't re answer. I love you, but listen, one day a man's going to tell you he loves you, but if he ever puts his hands on you, he'll never stop. Leave him alone. I would tell him that from the time they was little bitty girls. I'd tell him that all the time. If a man ever puts his hands on you, he'll never stop. Now, I see the reason why I said that was because I see women do that all the time. Take a good whooping. He said he's sorry. And take another one. It was my fault. I provoked him. And then take another one. Well, if I hadn't pushed so hard, if I'd have cleaned the dishes like he asked me to do, that's the way the devil does you. The devil will tell you, God doesn't love you. Come on back and let me whoop you some more. 
If God loved you, why does he let you have so many problems? Come on back to me. Come on back home. I got something waiting for you. That's the way he does. And some of us will get up and walk right out and go back, get another good whooping, come back to church. Things get a little tough, turn right around, go right back out, get another good whooping, come on back. Oh, yeah. Hey, 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 man, I'm almost finished. Why, 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 why keep going back? Why are you buying something that can't help you? Why are you paying for something that can't make you happy? Why keep wasting your money on stuff that doesn't satisfy your soul? What will satisfy you? Wine. Milk. Living waters. That's what will satisfy you. The new wine, talking about the Holy Ghost, that'll satisfy your soul. I hate to hear. It just, it's one of them things, uh, like my brother was saying this morning, like fingernails going down a chalkboard. I hate to hear people say, you complete me. Only God can complete somebody. What a, you can't put that on another human being. Another human being can't complete you. They may make you happy in between getting on your nerves. <laughs> All right. I mean, I just had to keep it 100. <laughs> they might make you happy, but only God can complete you. Only God can fill the gaps that nobody can fill. Only God can get down and give you joy when everything is going wrong. Only God can do that. Only God can satisfy your hungry soul. You can go out and try drugs, but when you get sober, you're still just like you was. You can go out and drink, but when you sober up, you're still just like you was. It might make you happy for the moment, but once you come down off your high, you still got to deal with you. You can go out chasing women, running from bed to bed. That won't make you happy. If it did... You don't even need to jump in one. Amen. If jumping in the bed was what it took, then that's all you have to do. Just find somebody that you can jump in the bed with and stay with them. It doesn't satisfy your soul. Amen. I'm not trying to make you feel like it don't feel good. There's a whole lot of stuff in sin that feels good. It'll make you feel good for the minute. But only one thing can give you joy unspeakable. And full of glory. Only one thing can do that. And that's the Holy Ghost. Only one thing can satisfy your soul when it's hungry. And nothing seems to be able to, to feed your appetite. Only one thing. That's the Holy Ghost. Only one thing can quench your thirst. The psalmist said, like the heart panteth at the water brook. Only one thing can satisfy the thirst that you have. And that's the Holy Ghost. When you get that and you holding on to it right nothing can come between you and God. Nothing can separate you from God. Nothing can come and make you say, I think something might be a little bit better because you know there's nothing better than what you got. You know that. So I'm going to end on the question. Why waste your money on something that can't satisfy you? All right, Elder Pompey. <laughs>